Hello and welcome to our next IoT webinar series. And here with a really, really cool topic, industrial net DevOps. I'm Florian Pachinger, and I'm a developer advocate for IoT at Cisco DevNet. And coming from an IoT background, uh, especially as a systems engineer in Germany, um, I worked on a really cool content today, what I would like to present to you. Enable your industrial network with programmability and automation. So let's talk about the agenda. And the agenda is really packed, so uh, I really try to make it as smooth and interesting, of course, uh, as possible uh, to put into this first uh, industrial net, net DevOps uh, webinar here. So I would like to start with what is exactly industrial net DevOps. And then I chose this approach. At first, I would like you to understand the tool set, so what is possible, actually, and then from there, to talk to you through the use cases and demos, which can be implemented today. So we are not talking about roadmap items. We are not talking about it can be done or it will be done uh, in, in a few months. You can start today with the tool set of industrial net DevOps. Also, uh, in the end, I would like to cover which tool set you should use then and exactly where. And then, of course, the outlook, because it's not done yet. Uh, it's just the beginning. Before starting with industrial net DevOps, the term itself, let's start with DevOps. Maybe you're familiar with DevOps itself, and uh, let's get through the definition. So DevOps is a set of practices that combines the software development, so Dev, and IT operations, Ops. So what does it mean? It means that if you're a software programmer, if you're a software engineer, developer, then you, of course, have as well a playground. You need to have uh, the right production environment. You need the right testing environment. You have requirements for the network, for applications. And you would like to have it as smooth, as, as fast, as easy as possible there. And, of course, you, who is helping you? The IT guys, the IT operations, the operation, uh, op ops guys, basically, are here to help you. And now, Think about this. Like all these tools and these principles of DevOps, which are now actually getting more and more mature, which are pretty common there already in the market, are going now more to the industrial world. So let's cover now industrial net DevOps. At first, industrial, what does it mean? It means that here we are focusing on industrial environments, such as manufacturing, utilities, oil and gas, mining, and we will cover definitely more use cases there as well. The net stands for network, and more specifically, industrial networks. So DevOps principles are applied to industrial networks. And now here, the common the approach here. And you will see the definitely similarities there in our OT IT world. Because the goal is to remove the barriers between two traditional silo teams, which is, in our way, the OT and the IT environment. And OT can be compared with the developments who would like to do their job, who would like to have, like, do everything what they are intend to do with the help of the infrastructure operations team with the IT teams. And this is the ops. So based on this environment or based on these terms, we are going more forward into what is the tool set, what are the use cases, and how can you leverage these principles. Here again, industrial net DevOps brings the culture, tools, technical methods, and best practices from DevOps to industrial networks. And net DevOps itself is not new, because Hank Preston basically introduced in 2017, so already three years ago, the, the, the whole term net DevOps. So what you see here is also you leverage or we leverage here together the principles what have been or are actually already applying to industrial, to enterprise networks on industrial networks there. So let's talk about the vision, the vision behind industrial net DevOps. And maybe it's a cliche or a classic there, but uh, this is basically the long-term approach of what we are aiming here for. So again, breaking down the barriers between the IT and OT departments to get them more aligned. And with the industrial net DevOps tools, this is possible. On the second hand, you increase the network change management 
increase the incident management and security. So what does it mean? It means that you have, especially uh, the, the, the idea changing, of changing the network is basically a good idea. This comes from the DevOps tool. So if change is actually intended, or if you are actually intending to change your network, then this is a, this is a good thing, because you know it, it's what will change, and you have everything under your control. The same for incident management and security. And the goal is basically to go into a more automation world, to the more automated world, where you build more scripts, more tools, specifically for your use cases, around the components which are already there. On the third po uh, point, you can see lower OT expenses and the downtime. So definitely, uh, you have here leveraging these, these automation tools, this, um, what we definitely will cover in, in what, just one slide. Um, it will, uh, you will get invisibility uh, into your industrial network. You will get definitely more data out of it, and therefore also increase the network effectiveness, so you have your control of your configuration of your uh, industrial networks there, of your industrial equipment as well. So before going into uh, the first step here of, of our journey, I would like to um, also uh, get to more familiar with uh, our industrial portfolio here. So if you're not familiar, and just for those people who are not familiar, we have a very broad portfolio uh, of, your, of our industrial world. But here, which is uh, in, in, in the rectangles, or like in the rounded rectangles with a red border, you can see here what we're focusing on. So we are, or this whole paradigm, is focusing on industrial switching, industrial environments with industrial security, also embedded can be a focus there, of course, then industrial wireless, of course, and then with the tools that we already have with management automation, for example, industrial network director, and so on. But then also, we are leveraging um, IoT gateways as well. M maybe this whole presentation or this whole industrial net DevOps is a bit more focused on the industrial switching side or industrial security and switching side. However, IoT gateways, they have also the capabilities uh, to run specific automation and programmability features. And now, let's dive actually right into this one here. And here is the highlighted hardware, which I would definitely um, mention here specifically uh, what can bring you forward, and especially what can bring industrial net DevOps forward. All these devices, what you see here, are running iOS XE. And iOS XE is the foundation for automation and programmability. It, ena and it enables you the interfaces there where, where you can definitely leverage all these features. So we have here the new um, IE 3000 series, 3200, 300, 400. Also, the heavy duty IE 3400 is running iOS XE. We have the industrial gateway, the IR 1101. We have the ESS, the embedded switch as well, which is running iOS XE. And then, of course, the Catalyst 9800 wireless controller, also running iOS XE, and you can leverage these APIs. And I really also would like to mention here as well the Catalyst 9000 series because the, basically like the hardware, what you see on the left side here, the iOS XE is based on nothing, nothing else than uh, the iOS XE on the Catalyst 9000 series. So feature-wise, it, it may be it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's the same platform, it's the same infrastructure team who is actually developing uh, this powerful operating system here. So without further ado, I would like now to get to understand for you the industrial net DevOps tool belt here. So at first, I would like to draw a picture there. So this is why I chose this approach, is to uh, tell you and explain you the tools what it can be done or what can be used there. So first of all, and you can see here below, this is the first, uh, the first pattern or the, or, or the, first, uh, uh, the first key element here, is the REST API and programming. So it's a basic skill set here to uh, how you can use and leverage the REST APIs. It's not, that, it's not that difficult, actually, because you as a user can simply use uh, REST API calls. You have the API documentation of all the tools which are out there, 
and what you can basically leverage. However, if you have only the interfaces there or only the REST APIs, you would like to maybe do something more. And there we need a logic. We need some, some third party or like some logic there which can do the automation, the task of what you intend to do. So for example, uh, Python is a classic tool set for, for a system, for a network engineer. Um, you can also, if you like uh, Go, for example, you would like, if you are familiar with C, C++, go with this way. If you like JavaScript, go there. Um, however, we definitely, or I would all definitely recommend Python there uh, as a really powerful and easy programming language to learn uh, what can bring you forward. And it's uh, just with a, uh, a couple of co lines of codes, basically, you can uh, definitely uh, do, a lot of, uh, do a lot of this stuff there. So moving forward from, from here, from the basic skill set to um, source and version control. I will cover this only here now, just for you to understand of what this is about. Um, but then uh, I will leave it maybe to phase two of our journey. So this source and version control, what is, the, what is the goal behind it? So the goal is basically to have a network as a code. So what does it mean? You store network configurations in the source control. And source control and version control are, for example, Git, GitLab, GitHub. So here are just some examples there. Maybe you're familiar with this, these terms. And basically, you can see it here uh, on, the, on the left side of the graphic. You have the computer of the IT and the computer of the OT. So if they work together, if they work together on the same configuration, on the same code basis, they can use the source control as a single source of truth. There they have the whole versioning system. They know exactly who made the changes and what exactly changed. And from there, you can directly go with programmatic uh, APIs, deploy this configuration, what both departments agreed on, to the switch. You can also use, of course, controller software like DNA Center, uh, or you can directly apply with your script or with another software automation tool to your, um, uh, to your IE switch, for example, here. Now, moving on from the source and version control to the control and orchestrator. And here you can see some classic examples, at first from the switching world, so DNA Center, Cisco Industrial Network Director, and they have both a, an extensive REST API. Also, when you look at Cisco Kinetic Gateway Management and Cisco vManage, so the Cisco SD-WAN portion, so this is basically where you can manage your industrial routers, they have also REST APIs. So what you can do, you can pull inventory reports, you can request status information, you can change your configuration there. And this is all possible with the power of REST APIs of this Cisco management software. Now let's come also to my favorite part and where I would definitely uh, start also focusing on to understand the power of the device level APIs. So basically, since iOS XE, the Cisco Industrial Ethernet Search 3400, here's just an example. You can also use the 3200, for example, or the IR1101. They support NetConf and RESTConf. And what does it mean? It means that you can actually configure, manage, and monitor via a standardized interface, via this is NetConf and RESTConf, uh, your Cisco switch. So basically, RESTConf leverages classic REST API, so HTTPS. NetConf leverages SSH, and no worries, we will come into, I, ha I have a demo actually uh, for these, for these uh, two protocols there. Um, and you can actually take any REST application, what you have, what you have already running in your data center, uh, on your notebook, uh, wherever basically, you can actually apply uh, any configuration change via REST call. And you can definitely also change it via a NetConf capable application. What is the difference between NetConf and RESTConf? So this is a more detailed question. So uh, basically, NetConf runs on SSH, is more mature, and RESTConf is basically the HTTP or the REST interface of NetConf there. Let's move on to automation software, which is another, uh, which is another piece there in our puzzle. So an automation software is, is basically here some examples there. 
Ansible, Puppet, Chef, for example, where you can leverage uh, basically automation tasks, like to do automation tasks. So this is an example. You have here this automation task, and also here we will have a demo later on. Uh, where you would like to change, for example, uh, the, uh, the um, configuration of an interface. So you simply configure just once. You only need to configure once the automation task and define which switches in your network needs to change this configuration. You send or you send this, this automation task to your automation software. And via NetConf, via SSH, via also CLI if it is supported, you can get these network changes out there. So this is basically also another tool what you can uh, le leverage already today. I also would like to cover here network verification and especially PI ETS. I won't go into detail here as well in this, in this, uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, however, I would really like to mention it. Because with the Cisco framework PI ETS, you can perform state stateful network validation. So you can retrieve information about all the network states what you have out there. You can do test cases on your network equipment. For example, when you upgrade a new image, you can do an automated test scenario of if everything works as it was intended to. So it is a really powerful uh, framework there. Um, as I said, I won't go into detail here uh, about this now, but definitely if you would like to have this uh, validation of this network verification, um, definitely uh, check out PyETS as well. Last but uh, not least, or like one one is still missing there, is uh, telemetry and monitoring. So you would like, of course, to visualize your data. You would like or create specific dashboards if, if you don't have it already yet there. So there are some lot of tools that you can leverage, so which here are not listed as well. Um, however, like with some stacks basically, which are um, really interesting or very popular, would be the TIG and the ELK stack. So TIG is here like for TIG. This is Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. So Telegraph would be the data broker where the data is coming in. InfluxDB would be the database where you store your data. And Grafana, sorry, would be the dashboard there. And with ELK, it's actually similar with Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And especially in Kibana, maybe you have also heard the term, you have a dashboard uh, where you can visualize your data there. So of course, you can get a lot of data from all, of, from all these tools. And you can definitely use this telemetry monitoring there. But what you can also leverage is model-driven te telemetry. So what does it mean? Model-driven telemetry is supported on iOS XE. So here you have a screenshot. You can run it in IR1101. And here with, uh, uh, you can see the status of the IR1101 in a Grafana dashboard. So with the fast Ethernet connection, you can see it here. Uh, the four ports are up. Uh, then what is the fast Ethernet traffic there, uh, the ups and the downs. So you can leverage all this data from model-driven telemetry. So you send the data via gRPC, um, so which is a, in, in binary format, which is a very, very fast and reliable um, information protocol or remote procedure call, uh, where you can get the data of your iOS 6e device. The huge advantage is it's push-based. So you can definitely, if there is some changes there happening there, you don't need to pull the data. The device itself will notify you or will notify if something happens. And also, it provides additional options there. So if you're not happy with the tools, what, um, for example, what, uh, what brings you uh, data already, like in the dashboard, or if you have already a dashboard and you would like to in integrate uh, some, uh, some specific devices there already, you can uh, put them there in there. Last but not least, and a very important, so don't uh, uh, take it as a priority first, so this security. Uh, so security for industrial networks, very important. And we have also here the tool set to leverage industrial net DevOps. So we have here Cisco CyberVision, which is an industrial security software, has also extensive REST APIs where you can pull the reports there. We all have also, I have a use case for that, not a demo, but a use case there. And also uh, Cisco Firepower Threat Defense has also REST APIs, what you can leverage. 
especially talking from the switch to the uh, to the to the um, uh, firewall, and of course Cisco Identity Services Engine, which leverages CX Grid, which is this uh, a classic like a uh, API, uh, what uh, Cisco IS is leveraging there. So all in all, this is the complete industrial net DevOps tool belt. And as you can see, a lot is possible with all these tools. And a lot of these tools are, of course, uh, also mature open source products. Mo um, some of them are standards already, so which are out there, which are not de facto standards. For example, like NetConf or RESConf or Yang, which are basically uh, standardized by IETF. And then, of course, um, um, uh, REST APIs and Python, which are definitely very mature out there. And don't forget, uh, the extensive APIs of the control and orchestrator Cisco software. So now, thank you. I, I hope uh, this was uh, not too long. I hope it makes sense to put this tool bit at first so that you understand of what is possible. And as I already told you, I would like now to give you use cases what are already out there and uh, definitely uh, focus on the device level APIs, also showcase you the automation software, and then uh, a bit of control orchestrator and security. And as you can see, the fundamentals, REST API and programming, they are in the end, and I will cover this a bit later, what is needed basically, not all these tools are needed. It depends on your use case. So if, if you only need or uh, work with REST API, you can do this. Uh, however, if you would leverage, of course, more into the programming um, uh, logic there, then definitely uh, leverage Python there. Let's get started with the use cases. This is definitely your starting point today. And again, you can find the use cases and the documentation already on developer.cisco.com. Uh, so you can, I created some learning labs, also some scripts there on GitHub. So please check them out. I, will, I have the link on later as well, where you, where you can already uh, test them uh, instantly. So the first use case would be, it's a classic one, uh, remote access. And this time, I, uh, I propose with ACL. So um, of course, it is an option what you can do. And it may, for, for some, uh, for, it may be a half of the solution, because you definitely need to leverage also the firewalls there to get, uh, as well. However, it's, uh, all these use cases should give you a trigger or a starting point of what is possible. So let's have this example here. So you have this remote engineer. You would like to access your faulty PLC or the, uh, the OT worker says we have a faulty PLC. And please, Mr. Remote Engineer, please access your my faulty PLC. You, do, you don't want to access directly that this uh, remote engineer is coming through. But you can definitely leverage, of course, with the help of uh, some configuration in the DMZ and in the firewall. You can definitely leverage as well here a classic enable and disable uh, layer two or layer three access controls. So basically, with an enable or with, with netconf, the remote worker, and together with a dashboard or with a Python script, they can enable simply uh, the netconf configuration here. So the iOS configuration <laughs> via, via netconf there. So let's get actually uh, through it. So I would like to uh, go now to my, uh, to my lab area here. And um, I will make this uh, a big bit bigger. So I will start my uh, Python code here. And basically, at first, I would like to showcase you here uh, what can you do with netconf. Uh, yeah, this was the last one, not with restconf, with netconf this time. What you can do here. So uh, I would say at first let's check out what is the uh, what can be or what is the problem there. So at first uh, at first I would like um, uh, to access, for example, here uh, this uh, uh, this this IP. But of course I can't uh, because um, access got denied. All right, cool. Uh, so this this we, we definitely would like to change this here. So basically uh, what uh, what is happening here right now? is that I would like uh, to um, disable here the remote, uh, sorry, I would like to enable here the remote access there. I just click on, on three. It says, OK, I did the netconf configuration there. Did it work through? And so let's uh, go again on the loading part. And of course, it didn't work because let's 
get here again with uh, with the disabling stuff. And of course, it didn't work either. Let's go to the yeah, 83. Okay, I forgot about the port. I'm sorry about this. This is now now it works. So now you can actually access it. Um, now you can access basically, and I use this local manager, the IP address uh, point 13, um, as a demo there uh, to access basically this faulty PLC. So what what did I do, or what uh, what did I do exactly here, right? So that you that you understand is like with the disabling stuff, uh, what what is happening there. I basically did, and I will go back here now to my slides to understand you you, you a bit, and then I will go back to the code as well. Is that I with the IE 3400 switch, and I have this application here, this client, I'm sending via SSH and via a remote procedure call or via this NetCon protocol. And don't worry, you don't need to get to know this uh, in a very, very detailed way, but because you have a very nice Python library, what, you can, uh, what can help you there, you can configure your iOS configuration in an XML data format. And this one is here, this Yang data, this in red here. This is basically this configuration, what uh, will enable or disable the ACL. And you can, and these uh, in the blue uh, rectangle or in the green one, this is basically just the NetConf protocol. So you can say here that this is the road procedure call. This is, you edit the configuration here, and then the target is the running configuration, and for config, you put in here your XML data here. And this is nothing else what I did. So um, uh, let, me, let me show you here, uh, here this one. So uh, b basically, um, let me go here. Uh, basically, what, what, is, what is here important? As you can see here, uh, the configuration there, and I don't, I don't want you to understand this now per se, but just for you to understand is that I put the, docu the configuration in, in an XML format. So you can maybe now a bit see here, this is the re remote access, uh, access list. This is the sequence. So basically, the whole iOS commands, what you, what, you, uh, what you would type in in configure terminal, is actually written in an XML format. And this will be applied simply with a couple of lines of code. Uh, via this line of code here, uh, via this uh, netconf edit config here. I hope I won't confuse it there. I just want to, to, to highlight here that you use an XML there, and basically you, have, uh, you, you provide this XML, and you have one line of code where you can actually say, this is my target, this is the running config there, and this is the configuration what I would like to change, and please put this configuration on, uh, onto my switch there. Going back to here as well, so this is the whole concept there, and uh, I have learning labs. I created some learning labs which get you started in a fast way of how can you create this XML configuration there and uh, how exactly can you use NetConf there. On the other hand, you could, you could have done the same with RESTConf. Uh, the only difference would be you don't use uh, the NetConf library. Uh, you can use a simple uh, another library. So you can use any HTTPS or REST a capable client. So you can do a post here, for example, or, or, um, um, or, or a put, for example. You specify where or what you would like to change. And then again, you put in the Yang data here in JSON or in XML in order to change uh, your configuration there. Cool. I hope I didn't uh, confuse you yet. So I will go to the next one, to the next use case. And which is uh, uh, which is called like with Ansible, so the software automation tool, with the push the IND configuration there. So what does it mean? You have, for example, lots of IE switches there, IE 3400, and you would like to install in this brown field um, your IND, your industrial network director. So what can you do? You can actually tell what like the switches, like what kind of switches should receive the configuration in the host inventory. And in the playbook, you actually define what or how does the configuration look like. And let's go into an example here, uh, again, with the, same, with the same switch. So at first, I would, like to, um, I would like to open the host inventory, the host inventory file. So 
let's, uh, let's figure this one here out. This is the inventory file. So it's really simple. It's saying here, this is the IP address of where I would like to change the configuration. So I would like to change the configuration of this switch here. If you would like to have more switches, so for example, you, uh, you would like to have this switch, like the 16 one, then the 70 one, and so on, you can, of course, do that. You can, of course, create more groups or more cells together. So you can, for example, say, I would like to change only the, the switches of cell 2. So you can create subgroups as well here out there. So as you can see, this is also really cool and very fast and easy um, uh, automation tool where you can configure um, with Ansible the, your, iOS, um, your, your iOS equipment. So for example, we have here the iOS operating system, the network CLI, we see it's a network CLI, and we see here this is the Ansible user is, um, is Cisco. So we don't put any passwords in there, but the Ansible user uh, we put in there. So when we would like to apply now this IND configuration, we actually create the playbook, so the other file, what you saw. So basically, and this is, this is the whole playbook actually, you can create comments there, so you can re uh, create a documentation of course, and uh, you write here the name, what is the name of it, uh, IND required IRS configuration, you see here hosts, so all the hosts which are which you, what you have seen the host file, so unfortunately in my lab now only one, will be, uh, this, this playbook will run on all hosts. You can, for example, write here now as well, of course, cell, um, cell 01. We don't, uh, right now, we don't want to get any facts, so any, any uh, specific facts on, on the Docker, on the, uh, on the device. But we would like to apply the iOS configuration, so in configure terminal, this code here. So this uh, iOS configuration we would like to apply. Of course, um, yeah, let's, let's figure out this one at first. So how do, how do we do this? So this is basically the whole, uh, the whole approach there. So we just run it here with um, Ansible. So let me also make this a bit bigger. Um, Ansible, then playbook. Then we specify the playbook what we would like to run. So we will say apply at, um, the IND iOS configuration. And because I didn't set uh, any specific SSH keys and so on, what you can definitely do, I just write minus K, so I would be authorized directly um, when I do the playbook or when I run the playbook. So I type in my SSH password, and then uh, it will run, Ansible will run. I, it is doing the task, it is applying this configuration, and as you can see, it changed. Cool, perfect, it worked, everything is good, and if there would be more uh, configuration tools, or if there would be more, uh, sorry, more iOS XE, de iOS XE devices, then you definitely can do so. So you can definitely add more devices on here as well. And if you would like to, for example, get your XML configuration there as well, so with Netcon, so you can actually uh, do lots of uh, other stuff. So you can actually uh, enable Netcon there, and then afterwards, uh, put in this configuration what we just did with our Python script. Um, we, uh, you can also apply this VLAN, for example, or create this VLAN interface uh, directly with a netconf iOS configuration here as well, or in an XML format, if it's here. You can also backup specifically uh, the um, XML configuration or iOS configuration. So what you can see here, oh, sorry, this is not what I wanted to do. Um, uh, for example, here, you can save the running configuration. So there are specific modules of Ansible, for example, the iOS config, where you run your backup, and then you, for example, have here in the backup folder the running configuration of the switch in XML, or if you would like to have it in another format, uh, you can also do it in the uh, classic CLI way. So much for the Ansible demo or like the use case of, of that you can leverage also software automation tools uh, in order to um, uh, configure lots, like hundreds, thousands of your IE switches there. Also, another use case, uh, and this is another use case, uh, I, uh, because of time-wise, uh, the demo, I can't show the demo there, but uh, you can get inventory data 
uh, and uh, out of Cisco CyberVision, for example, uh, and uh, get or collect a DNS request um, and check it with Cisco Umbrella, with the Cisco Umbrella Investigate API. So uh, as you may know, we have lots of, like uh, in, in the OT world, you have lots of different protocols, and Cisco CyberVision is collecting all these uh, protocols um, uh, with uh, basically a span, so with a port span, and analyzing the frames and collecting specific DNS requests. And with a classic uh, tool there, so with a classic uh, iOS tool set, um, you, can, uh, you can basically, so with Python script, for example, you can uh, um, collect all of these DNS requests with, again, with the REST API of Cisco CyberVision, check it with Cisco Umbrella, and the outcome you will see is if any DNS requests were malicious or if the DNS requests were, for example, not uh, 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 not in uh, not in the green light, basically, or like some OT uh, asset is requesting uh, to uh, as a malicious DNS request. Another tool, for example, and uh, is ChatOps. So, uh, what does it mean? And maybe it is a bit a bit of a cliche, but with NetConf or with leveraging only a small Python script, which has only 80 lines of code, and you can definitely check it out on, on GitHub, you can actually do or change the configuration via a simple chatbot. So, for example, you will here in the, uh, uh, the industrial Ethernet switches, the 3400 one on the left side, and they are sending the data via NetConf and RESTCon to the Python application. So it can either be that the switch is sending information on a push principle to the Python application and from there to the WebEx team spot, or that a user is actually requesting or changing the, 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 the configuration. So. What do you, what, uh, what's, what's the demo here, or what uh, uh, you see the screenshot of the demo basically, is that you have here um, uh, the bot which can change or disable or enable simply the interface. So when I write change interface for enable, then it says here change interface for was success, success, uh, successfully enabled. And you have here the different um, uh, help, helping tools there so you can get info of all the interfaces, you can get basic device information, or you can change the interface for, or basically, actually, you can enable this to any other interface. And all these chat ups, all this, all this basically tool set there, what you see uh, is a simple Python application, is a simple WebEx team spot, what you can register for free, and it's only, only maximum 80 lines of code uh, uh, of, of just changing uh, one interface here. So this is basically pretty much amazing that it doesn't require you a lot of code in order to do this environment. Another uh, um, information what I can uh, or what I what I would definitely would like to to, to show you is uh, at the simple dashboard as well. So when you see here, this is an example dashboard. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an example dashboard what you can leverage. So you can. You saw the Python script. You saw the backend now. But you can simply enable a web-based dashboard in order to enable in your specific cells SSH, the specific um, uh, protocol, so you can leverage a user interface. So you can create um, a simple user interface uh, what can change your configuration. So if an OT worker is coming to your dashboard and you would like to have the full control of what is capable, of what, what the OT worker can do, you can create this interface here. Uh, the OT worker can create, select SSH, RDP, or what is uh, basically uh, um, uh, required. Click then on what is the endpoint. So is it either the IPC, is it the PLC client, is it uh, some machine there? And click on save the configuration there. So I just want to showcase you here that with a simple um, a dashboard with a simple web-based dashboard. Everything makes a lot of easier and a lot of simpler, uh, and of course, everything a lot of automated. Because what the user is capable of, or the OT worker, this is defined by the IT or by the creator, basically, of this dashboard here. When we continue there, uh, now you maybe ask yourself, okay, uh, which tool set should we use? 
And I think, um, as you may know, it depends. Yes, it depends always, but let me tell you, or let me go through, through this example here, i.e. switching management. So if you would like to change the VLAN interface on the industrial Ethernet switch 3400. So you can do this, of course, on a CLI or on box web UI. If this is fine for you, this is totally OK. You can use SSH. You can also leverage um, SNMP in, in one of your tools or HTTPS, as you prefer. You can also use, of course, um, depending on the persona, depending on the use case, Cisco DNA Center with REST APIs, with a dashboard. You can use the industrial network director with a dashboard and also with a REST call. And then, of course, you can also use your own Python script with a REST call. So there you leverage NetConf and RESTCon. So you directly talk to your device there. You directly talk to your Cisco switch. And as I showed you before, if you would like to use um, Ansible, which is an open source software management tool here, you can also use an Ansible playbook. So as you see before, uh, with SSH, with NetConf, in order to change the VLAN interface or one or several devices here. And also, just also to mention here, also with a REST call, with a Python script, also with a dashboard here, you can, of course, uh, change several devices instantly. Just with a CLI or like Onbox Web UI, it's, of course, definitely more difficult. Uh, you need to go one by one, actually. And so let's have the facet here, or let's uh, talk about this through. It's about all methods work but it depends on the use case. So it depends on you, on your environment, on the personas, on who is managing the OT, the IT network, uh, who is doing what, what it would be the right tool there um, uh, for you to use. So in manufacturing, so let's uh, check also in this into, or go into some, uh, some various verticals there. In manufacturing, when, you, when we look at the Purdue model, you can check, you can, for example, install the industrial network tool set in the industrial zone. So where I industrial network director is installed, uh, you can check there with Git, PyTS, um, Ansible, Python script, not limited to these tools. Here's just, just some examples there. So at first, definitely leverage existing Cisco tools like the IND, CyberVision, Industrial Services Engine, and SailForge in order to give you the, the functionality what you need. And then for additional integrations, for the additional glue if you need them, or for some additional innovative, innovative meet, uh, uh, situations and in, in, in innovative uh, configurations, uh, there use custom Python scripts. Use, for example, the Ansible. Use um, uh, Git in order to have a common source control tool. Or, for example, the uh, Cisco, Cisco Framework PyTS. And of course, I wrote etc. because it's definitely not limited to these tools there. When we go to substation automation, so also here, definitely leverage all the existing uh, Cisco industrial tools uh, with their APIs already, and then for additional integrations, uh, in the you can add it there in the control center or or locally. Um, also, you glue basically uh, custom Python scripts, the Ansible workstation, and so on. Was we was we covered there. And last but not least, um, uh, what, uh, what I would like to showcase here is Extended Enterprise. So Extended Enterprise use case where DNA Center is already deployed. Um, so definitely use Cisco DNA Center. Use the extensive REST APIs, which is really powerful there. Uh, and then again, for additional integrations, use custom Python scripts in order to uh, basically get uh, your configuration out of Git. Um, also, uh, if you want to talk directly uh, to, to your switch or if some configurations are not possible uh, with DNA Center, um, depending, again, with a uh, asterisk, depending on the use case, you can definitely use and leverage the device-level APIs as well. So what I would like to say here is, and coming to the end now uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Outlook Industrial Net DevOps, this is just the beginning. As you can see, I try to cover in a nice package a lot of use cases, a lot of tools of what you can leverage there. And I hope that you get the point and you have a good starting idea of what is even possible there. So keep in mind, change will not happen in one day, but you can start today. You can actually go to developercisco.com, and I will definitely uh, have this page in, in the end, where you can actually go there, get started with RESTCONF, NETCONF, 
get started with Ansible, and get to know what is possible with the device level APIs as well. Then get into APIs and programming and use the power of programmability and automation. Especially in the industry, you can definitely leverage uh, all these powerful tools which are out there, which are proven to be there, which are mature already, and uh, get started. Because in the end, uh, think out of the box. It depends on every single use case uh, what is possible or how programmability can help there. Uh, uh, always think about the challenges what you have there and uh, think maybe you can solve them with API or with a simple programming tool which helps a couple of hours or which helps you a couple of hours per week or per month uh, what can save you time there. And of course, Cisco DevNet is here to help you to get you started. So we have a uh, lot of learning labs. We have uh, also a lot of content out there, also sandboxes, and I will cover this in the next slide, of that, like, which can get you started there. So in the end, Industrial Net DevOps, get started definitely today. Here, go to developersisco.com. You find here uh, the new Industrial Net DevOps learning labs. So you can uh, dive straight into uh, NetCon and RESCON, so, and also Ansible. And I would like to really like to remind you, all these use cases, what you saw there, they are documented and they are, the scripts are available on GitHub. Um, not to all of them, so I still, some are still a work in progress, but to also to the others which I did not cover, uh, they are on there. And for example, the uh, JetOps uh, tool set, for example, this is definitely on there where you can start actually today. Also, we have definite sandboxes, so reserve your virtual environments. Uh, where you can learn, where you can test. So if you don't have an iOS XC device ready, just um, uh, leverage uh, one of the learning labs, uh, so, so one of the sandboxes which are mentioned in the learning lab, so the iOS XC devices there. Um, so it doesn't matter which iOS XC device you uh, need to do or, or uh, uh, what you can use. So you can use basically um, um, any iOS XC device depending, of course, on, on some specific configuration. But for your starting point, you can use uh, the, um, the iOS 6e, the general iOS 6e sandbox on DevNet here. And, of course, check out on Code Exchange uh, new industrial network of scripts. So you can see here all the scripts which are uh, currently available. So how can you enable the interfaces? How can you get the running configuration in NetConf, in, uh, in plain CLI? Um, and so on. So these are actually ready to go. You just need to execute them. Uh, and like I said, with the learning lab, uh, they are already on there. With that being said, uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. If you have any questions, definitely write them right now in the, in the chat box. Uh, you can also reach out to me uh, if you have some specific content there. Uh, what I would, in the end, uh, maybe you saw also the, uh, the blog post on Industrial Net DevOps. Uh, I put already um, a nice uh, blog post already together as well there. So when you go to uh, in um, industrial and net DevOps, um, and you can see the in the Cisco blog, so you can just Google it. Uh, then I already put out a really nice blog there as well, where you can actually see um, all the uh, the recording of the webinar here, the learning labs, and the code exchange, and of course all the use cases and more information on there. For, from that being said, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope this was really useful to you. I would happy actually to also get your feedback there uh, and, and discussion points. Uh, and yeah, uh, please uh, get your questions ready. And thank you very much for listening.